London, Birmingham and Manchester are all now minority white cities. No, they are not. The ONS now say in future they will not ask of the nationality or birthplace of those taking part in. No, they don't. <laughs> Real standout from these numbers today. It's a scandal. It sure would be a scandal if it was true. <laughs> Hello lovely people, my name is Emma, welcome back to my channel, welcome if you are new. I am always unhappy, always unhappy, when Nigel Bloody Farage pops up in my feed. Old Neagle Feagle. If you're not familiar with Farage, former leader of the UKIP party, the UK Independence Party, he was also the leader of the Brexit party, now he's a broadcaster. He's a Piers Morgan type. He's very popular with right-wing broadcasters in the USA. He's buddies with Donald Trump. He went like campaigning with Donald Trump and did loads of speeches for him. And he's one of these types that absolutely lives on misinformation. That's his whole shtick. So when I saw his face pop up in a video on Twitter and I heard him talking about uh, the latest census figures, I knew I was in for some bullshit. <laughs> so we've just had our latest census figures out. It has been talked about a lot. You've probably heard about the fact that we are technically a minority Christian country now. It's below 50% of people in the UK identify themselves as Christian, which is part of what Nigel Farage talks about. Basically the uh, ONS, the Office for National Statistics, does this census every 10 years and uh, Everybody in the UK is obligated to fill in this census and that helps them gather data about demographics in different places across the country. So nationality figures have been released and uh, Nigel Farage is unhappy. He's unhappy because bloody hell there just aren't enough white people in the UK anymore. I know, I know. It's, it's amazing, it's amazingly farcical. Nigel Farage built his fairly brief political career out of anti-immigration uh, rhetoric. He has that position of blaming immigration for all of the country's problems. He thinks the country isn't white enough anymore and he has uh, made some interesting statements that may not all be correct. Most of them are not correct. Let's just listen and you'll see what I mean. Bloody Neagle Fiegel. So here is Nigel Farage in a car with a flag behind him because of course. The Office of National Statistics figures are out today showing that London, Birmingham and Manchester are all now minority white cities. No they are not! <laughs> We're off to a strong fucking start. London, Birmingham and Manchester are all minority white cities, according to Nigel Farage. Unbelievably, Mr Farage is mistaken. <laughs> Potentially part of the problem here, and this is kind of giving him an out, so you're welcome, uh, he may be conflating white and white British. So Manchester is 57% white, 49% identify as white British. So if you wanted to say Manchester is minority white British, you'd technically be correct by 1%. It's still a misleading way to use the statistics, but at least that would actually be a correct statement. But obviously 57% are white, and that's because that's because there are five ONS categories of white people. You've got white British, that's English, Welsh, Scottish, Northern Irish, or British, Irish, Irish traveller or gypsy, Roma, and other. So basically to use the white British statistic to pretend that white people are a minority is saying that like, Irish people and Roma people aren't British, <laughs> which is like, they don't identify as white British, that's the point, but they're, they're white. Once you understand what those statistics actually mean, it's pretty fucking stupid, isn't it? 54% white in London, 37% white British, so again, it's discounting people who identify as Roma, Irish traveller, Irish, etc. Birmingham, Birmingham is 49% white, so he was right about one of three by by one percent 49 percent but that's it, it technically that is correct he was a uh, mistaken is a kind way to put it because i do kind of think farage is an idiot so it's possible for him to just have been completely wrong but he's also the kind of person that will never go oh shit that was wrong and correct it he'll just keep repeating this white people are a minority now rhetoric because that's what gets people <laughs> angry against immigrants which for some reason he wants because that benefits him because that's his thing now and so it benefits him financially because the angrier people are the more they will listen to fucking morons like Nigel Farage I guess. London is obviously broken into boroughs as well so you have to account for 
Greater London as a whole. The ONS actually released a statement talking about this. So, um, by the way, I'm at a glance, I'm going to put this down below because this is a really nice, simple way. I'll put the ONS results and their statement down below too, but um, there's a BBC News article. This is one of the redeeming things that I really like, actually, about the BBC. They have this, um, I don't know what you'd call it, they have this sort of department, they have this thing called reality check where they fact check people like Nigel Farage, like they um, they do fact checking anytime it's election season somewhere, they uh, fact check statements made in debates and things as well. It's something that I think is praiseworthy, they do really well. So this is by reality check and I will leave this down below, it's nice and easy to see. So, so this is so this m abusing statistics to make some sort of point about, you know, increasingly persecuted white British people um, is so common that the ONS released a statement about it. There have been misleading statistical claims that the latest census data shows that white people are now a minority in London and Manchester. This is confusing responses from people who have identified with the white British ethnic group with responses which identify with white ethnic group. In London, 53.8% of usual residents identify their ethnic group within the high-level white category. In Manchester, 56.8% of usual residents identify their ethnic group within the high-level white category. That's obvious from the statistics. It sucks that ONS had to release a statement. I'm glad they did, because they've put it very simply on paper. Here is the percentage. Here's why people are misunderstanding or abusing these statistics. Here's the other thing about census data. It is about personal identification. This is this is basically just a form that gets sent out to every person and it's about how you identify. Basically it's a very easy thing to abuse. <laughs> it provides opportunities for charlatans like Farage to mislead data and I'm I'm sick and tired of hearing like London is gonna be minority white it's 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 happening it's terrible as if as if it even matters <laughs> like I, I live in London is one of the most diverse cities in the country, um, if not the most. Often to the detriment of other parts of the country, London is one of the most successful cities in the country. I think it's probably fair to say that most Londoners wouldn't give a shit what percentage of the population here is identifies as white British. It doesn't... it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> and this seems obvious, but again, Nigel Farage level stupidity, I feel I have to say it, not all British people are white. <laughs> it doesn't mean that, you know, 50% are, are British, it means that 50% identify as white British. So there are non-white British people as well. And then yes, there are immigrants, there are people who identify as different nationalities. That's fine. That's okay. Like, I don't, I don't understand what the it, it gets into weird... Uh, it gets into weird conspiracy territory when you try to actually delve in and understand why it would be a problem if London isn't majority white. I don't know how I say this. It, it gets into, like, you know, that kind of, um, that weird rhetoric of you, you should only be reproducing within your own race to sort of perpetrate I, your skin tone. I don't know. It, it's... It gets... It's just... Re it just gets rained <laughs> as soon as you start to look into why it would fucking matter, it's just like, oh, because racist conspiracy theories. That's it. Because, like, the the sort of, like, slippery slope fear-mongering argument is like, well, white people will be, will be wiped out because everyone will be, you know, people will continue mixing and travelling and everyone will become mixed race, and it's like, not only is that not how that works, but if that did happen, who the f who cares? Why is it so important that in 200 years, there are some people on the same island with the similar skin tone as you had. It boggles the fucking mind. The thing is, like like I say, I do live in London, and I don't think most Londoners would give a shit. Um, we're too preoccupied, we're, we're too preoccupied with the fucking uh, house prices and <laughs> the state of renting and shit here to worry about bloody how white it is. Every time I say it out loud, it sounds more absurd. Nigel Farage isn't targeting people who live in diverse places, he's not targeting young people who are more understanding, who are more open to things like open immigration policies and stuff. He's targeting people in small villages. Say like, I live in London now, I grew up in a small village by the sea, it's famous for having, at one point, it had the highest average age in all of Europe. <laughs> the, 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 the town that is the borough 
of the village that I grew up in. And so there's lots of small villages like this that are majority white, much, much older population, and they are just through lack of exposure. It's not necessarily anybody's fault. It's just through lack of exposure to different looking and sounding people. They are less understanding. They don't have less comprehension of diverse generally equals better. And so they read headlines on the Daily Mail and they listen to Nigel Farage and they go, oh yeah, immigrants are probably causing all of our problems. Phew, that's a nice easy scapegoat for me to blame. Doesn't impact me or my life because I don't know any immigrants. I just, oh, they sound like probably they are causing the problems and oh no, there's fewer white people, more of those immigrants that are causing all my problems. That is scary and horrible. I better join the, the fight. It's You can see how quickly silly ideas and nonsense and misleading data can spread in certain places. Some of those people are kind of victims of the press that they're subjected to, and that's why people like Nigel Farage and papers like The Daily Mail should absolutely be repeatedly fact-checked and as loudly as we can we should be screaming about the fact that they are wrong, they are misrepresenting statistics, they are in some cases just outright lying. Unfortunately that information doesn't usually get to the groups that matter. People that follow Nigel Farage just follow Nigel Farage and believe what he says. But we, we should keep trying, I think we should keep trying. Nigel has more to say. Birmingham and Manchester are all now minority white cities. Massive, massive demographic change is taking place in our country. They're very, they're very, they're within a few percent and the census is every 10 years. So a few percent within 10 years is not what I would call a massive, massive demographics change. Country. More significantly for the country as a whole, it shows that only 46 percent now identify as Christian. So there is a massive that's actually true. He's right about something. Neagle Fiegel got something right. Yes, that's right. Technically, technically, Britain as a whole, the United Kingdom, is now minority Christianity. Let's not, again, let's not get that confused because these statistics are easy to manipulate and misunderstand. Christianity is still the majority religion, but only, I think, did you say 46%? 46% of the country as a whole are Christian. Interestingly, I think um, Islam and, oh, others. <laughs> yeah, just other religions, Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, uh, Jewish, and people who identify with other religions were on the rise, very, very, very slightly. But people who identify as Christian was way down, and people who identify with no religion was way up. So, hooray for the UK. A change in the identity of this country that is taking place through immigration. You may think it's a good thing, you may think it's a bad thing, but here's the real point of this. I like that. So that's um, that's a that's a classic mistake, Neagle, Mister Mister Fiegel. Uh, correlation doesn't equal causation. I don't think it, it probably is a part of it. Probably a small part of uh, the decline of people identifying as Christian is related to. Um, immigration, because if people are immigrating from non-Christian countries to here, it stands to reason that that <clears throat> excuse me that number would dip. The actual number of people identifying as Christian from the previous census in 2011 to this census in 2021 was down 5.8 million people. It's not because 5.8 million immigrants came over. It's because it's because there are 5.8 million people fewer identifying as Christian than in the last one. And I think that's partly the decline of the Church of England, which is down to a myriad of reasons that deserves, you know, its own discussion. Um, there's a whole there's a whole shit ton of reasons like that. I think part of it is their refusal to uh, modernise. Part of it is that we are quite a secular country and we have been trending in the direction of more secular, you know, and, and less religious as time goes on, so it just stands to reason that that would continue to uh, increase. As I like to keep mentioning when we talk about the decline of religion in certain places, rationality is on the rise. Fewer people are identifying as uh, Christian by default, I'll call it. I don't think that changes our national identity massively. Maybe I'm biased because I am an atheist and so I've never associated Christianity with my national identity. But we have long been a pretty secular society. Every now and then uh, one of our prime ministers will be like, we are a Christian nation and we have good Christian values. But whenever that happens it's like, ugh. You know, we're not like the USA. It's not like we, we're trying to inject 
this religion into every aspect of our lives. It's still a part of schooling and it's still a part of a lot of, you know, the typical activities that kids will do as they're being brought up, but there is just less and less of that Christianity by default going on and so fewer people identify as Christian. In my opinion, the more people identify as no religion or the more people that identify as much smaller groups, there's a lot of sort of uh, modern shamanism and stuff is on the rise, um, paganism, Wicca, the more people identify with no religion or the small religions compared with these huge organizations that we know can be very damaging the better in my opinion i guess that just depends on your opinion but the thing is even if you're if you're a, a proper christian christian you're yes church of england all the way and it's got to be the we've got to try and convert as many as possible biblically you're always supposed to be the minority like it shouldn't be it shouldn't really be a surprise or necessarily a bad thing. I mean, it shouldn't be anyway because everybody should be accepting. And most people are. I think, especially in the UK, I don't think that there aren't many Christians that are sort of hardcore in this way of everyone else is going to hell. It's mostly not like that here. But like, even if you are like that, you're going to heaven. The other people were never going to heaven anyway, you know? narrow path. It was always supposed to be like that. It shouldn't be... What I'm saying, trying to get at is it, it shouldn't be like a shock. It shouldn't be shocking or surprising or terrible that there aren't that many Christians. Because when you get to the end, there's not supposed to be that many at all. <laughs> like, it's... You're, you're the sort of persecuted minority, biblically. So I don't understand why that's a problem anyway, even if you are this hardcore believer. I'm feeling I'm a bit rambly today. I hope I'm making like vague sense. Let's get back to Nigel, see what he wants to round off with. The ONS now say in future, they will not ask of the nationality or birthplace of those taking part in. No, they don't. <laughs> so this is the first one that I can say out and out is absolutely 100% a lie. He's not misunderstanding something. He's not misinterpreting something. He's just made this up. Or possibly one of Neagle Fiegel's mates has said this to him and they've been lying and he's just assumed that it's true. You know, I don't know. That's bullshit. Again, ONS in their statement came out and were like, no, no, that's not, nobody said. The census is every 10 years. This next ONS census, if it happens at all, that's not even been decided yet. The idea that they have already decided that it's going to happen and exactly how they're going to conduct that survey when they haven't even... We, we barely finished going through what the results of this survey means. <laughs> like, you fucking clown. That's just, it's just a lie. So I'll read you a little bit of their statement responding to uh, these claims as well. Sounds like basically they're just replying to Nigel Farage, but I wouldn't be surprised if because of his relative fame, notoriety, I guess, um, this has been spread around a lot from him. It's been suggested that in future the ONS will not ask people their country of birth or publish data on the subject. This is simply not true. No decision has been taken on the future of the census. The National Statistician will be making a recommendation to government at the end of 2023 on what is needed for us to continue to realise our ambitions for more frequent, timely and inclusive population and social statistics. How could they possibly have decided exactly what they're doing when we, we've, we've just collected this data from the last census? It's, it's absurd. As far as the ONS is concerned, their entire goal is just to produce the most accurate and timely information that they can. They're, they're about recording the statistics so that other people can understand what that means and what to do with that. Like, all, all they want is to collect the most accurate data. Nigel Farage, I'm assuming, I, I guess we'll listen to what he says, but I'm assuming Nigel Farage is thinking this is part of some kind of conspiracy to hide that the number of white British people is declining. Because, <laughs> you know, a diverse population is bad because of reasons. So, good old Neagle Fiegel, he went from misleading to straight up lying. I think he's got, out of all the statements he's made so far, he's got maybe one correct about, um, what, B Birmingham? Yeah, because Birmingham is now 49% white. So he was right about, so he said, Birmingham, London, Manchester were minority whites. So we got one of those. And then ONS changing their approach for the next census. That's completely wrong. So three lies and a truth. <laughs> Good job, Neagle. This census. One in six in England and Wales already born outside the UK. In future, they want to hide... That's now 
two out of five. One in six people usually resident in uh, the UK were born outside of the UK. So that is also technically correct. Good job, Neeg. Made the true figures from you. That's the No, they're not. We've been through that's a complete lie. He's throwing a conspiracy theory on top of a lie. Incredibly dangerous thing to do. Shows exactly why I fucking hate this man. I loathe him with all of my heart. Um, and I hate seeing him pop up on the internet. I'm glad that both BBC News and ONS have come out with very simple, concise fact-checking to say, no, this is completely wrong. I, I, like I say, I, I fear that will not touch the people that have already been convinced of this sort of, you know, white minority conspiracy thing. Um, but at least the information is out there. Real standout from these numbers today. It's a scandal. It sure would be a scandal. If it was true. <laughs> if the Office for National Statistics, which again are just about collecting data from residents of the UK, if they for some reason had a big conspiracy to hide the number of... <laughs> to hide the, the true numbers of white people in the UK, that would be a huge scandal and a really weird confusing one because I can't see what they would gain out of that. But um, it's a lie. It's, it's a total lie. So... No scandal today, Neeg. I suppose the big scandal here, Nigel Farage, is uh lying about the country's statistics, lying about the ONS, lying about the number of white people in the UK and uh, spreading conspiracy theories based on those lies. I, t I guess that is kind of a scandal, so Neagle Fiegel is the real heart of the scandal here. It's totally bizarre because, like I say, it should be kind of irrelevant. It shouldn't It shouldn't matter if, you know, this, this conspiracy was true and it really is becoming, the country is becoming less white in a, in a dramatic turn. Um, and they're trying to cover it up. What? For, why? Why would they be covering up? And that, just, just so people like Nigel Farage won't complain? I don't know. Um, it wouldn't fucking matter. Because it doesn't matter how white the population of the UK is. Shit that matters is stuff like housing, education. It's like there's there's so much in... There's so much census data that is really important. And this is interesting. It's interesting to see how um, immigration might affect stuff like religion and things like that. And it's interesting, certainly interesting for me to see Christianity on the decline in the country. It doesn't really fucking matter compared to compared to the actual shit. Do you know what I'm saying? Like when we have a huge homelessness problem, when we have different uh, ethnic groups disproportionately affected by things like uh, homelessness, lack of education, stuff like that, that's valuable data to get out of the census because then we can change that. Well, hopefully, then we can work to change that. Obviously, people like Nigel Fiegel wouldn't give a fuck, but he's not a politician anymore. Hooray! I don't know, the whole thing just blows my mind because I just don't care. I just I just don't care. I don't care if we're 3% less white than we were 10 years ago. You know, I just can't bring myself to care because I can't see a way that it matters. Like I said, I'm, I'm concerned about shit like the housing crisis. I'm concerned about, I mean, we're in the middle of a financial crisis right now. People are choosing between heating and eating. Families are struggling to stay afloat. Like, that shit is just so much more important and it affects everyone, whatever nationality they identify with. The idea that there's some sort of crisis around us being less white is just fucking absurd. It's ridiculous. It's pure conspiracy nonsense. Neagle Fiegel demonstrates that it's it's built and relies on lies and all it does is perpetuate hatred. It's perpetuate hate crime by blaming immigration by... Th I mean, this is straight up just saying anyone who's not white is not us. That's what Nigel was saying. It's othering people who Again, they, they are British just because they don't identify as, as white British. I mean, this is even pitting, you know, the Irish against us. It's like, it's it's stupid and frustrating and I hate it. And I hate Nigel and I hate conspiracy theories. So why is it so many conspiracy theories have racism at the heart of them? I wonder how many major conspiracy theories would be left if you took away the racism of the people that perpetuate them. Probably not that many. Just to cheer me up, let's just watch a very quick clip from 2019 of somebody throwing a milkshake on Nigel Farage. Oh, this was back when he was still in politics. A dark time. There he goes! Way! Gentleman's an absolute hero. He's so pleased, he's so happy, and he should be. 
He's covered in milkshake. And he's acting like everything's fine, but he looks all disturbed. I know it's mean, but fuck him. He's just he's just lied about the ONS census purely to perpetuate a racist conspiracy theory. So I'm going to laugh at him covered in milkshake. There we go. I just thought that would lighten the mood at the end of that. <laughs> so yeah, Nigel Farage is probably not the only person perpetuating this bizarre white minority conspiracy uh, if you see this pop up anywhere, it isn't true. Birmingham is 49% white. If uh, that's an issue for you, then that's the only true statistic. London is not minority white. Manchester is not minority white. If you hate Irish and Roma people, then I guess you can just go with the white British statistics and be angry about that. I don't know why you would, but you can. And no, ONS are not going to hide these statistics from you in the future to, I don't know, in some kind of weird conspiracy to hide how many people in the UK are white. They've not even decided if there's going to be a 2031 census or how it's going to go, so that's bullshit too. People like Nigel Fiegel desperately need to be called out on this fucking nonsense. You can't just... Well, you can. Modern technology. You can just say whatever lies you want and the world can hear you and believe you. So keep fact checking that shit. Thank you for listening. I know it's a bit of a random one whenever I go into specifically British news or, you know, British politics or something like that, but um, I think wherever you're from, you can agree this is kind of fucking stupid. A lot of my U US audience is probably familiar with Farage because of his buddy-buddy relationship with Trump, so uh, you might get some, uh, you might get some enjoyment out of seeing him Dast with a milkshake. I certainly do. And I don't feel bad about it because he's a liar and a dickhead. And on that note, <laughs> do leave your thoughts down below. Do you give a shit what percentage of your country is is white? <laughs> Before we go, I would like to give a huge thank you and a shout out to my giant chickens and colossal quackers over on Patreon. <laughs> Have yourself a very lovely week. I will see you really soon.